For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in the last video we discussed the wave nature of electrons, which are classically viewed as particles. And in this video we're going to explore the particle nature of light or of photons. And we actually have already mentioned this. We've already mentioned that light, which is classically viewed as a, a wave, behaves as if it's made up of tiny particles that are called photons. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to realize that using de Broglie's equation we can calculate the momentum which is represented by P for a photon with a certain wavelength. Okay. So momentum is actually equal to mass times velocity and it's a property that is conserved in the same way that energy is conserved. Um, but in this case we're not going to take it to be equal to m equals or m equal to m times v. We're going to take uh, v to be just the speed uh, of the particle that we've mentioned was u. Okay. So this here is the de Broglie wavelength equation and you'll notice at the bottom here we have m times u. So that's basically what momentum is. So we can replace m times u with p. So we'll have the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant over p. And from there we can just solve for momentum and get that momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by lambda. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that the momentum is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So if we have a smaller wavelength, we have a larger momentum. If you divide by a smaller wavelength, the momentum's value gets bigger. Okay. The opposite is true. If you have a larger wavelength, you have a smaller momentum. Okay. Now, I put uh, new and energy here, but um, that's sort of really just there for recall. If you have a, a lower wavelength, you have a higher frequency and a higher energy. Right? This is from the C equals lambda nu equation, and this is from the E equals H nu equation. Okay? And of course, you have a higher wavelength, you have a lower frequency and a lower energy as well. Okay, okay so in 1923, Arthur Compton shine some x-ray photons at graphite and notice something interesting. So he had x-ray photons coming in, x-ray photons coming in with a certain wavelength and they reflected with a different wavelength. Specifically the the wavelength that reflected off of the graphite was bigger than the one that was incoming. Okay, So he noticed, like I said, that the reflected photons had a larger wavelength. And this means something for momentum. Something has a larger wavelength that has a smaller momentum, a lower momentum. So the momentum of the reflected photons was less than the momentum of the photons coming in. So momentum decreased. Now that's an issue because momentum is conserved, just like energy is conserved. That's a physics concept, so don't don't get crazy if you don't already know that. But momentum is conserved, and if you're coming in with a certain momentum, and it, these these photons are coming in with a certain momentum, and they're leaving with a smaller momentum, where did the rest of the momentum go? Right, because there's still some that has to be accounted for. What happened was that the photons transferred. They transferred their momentum, at least some of it, to the electrons in the graphite which is a particle-like behavior. Light is coming in and with a certain momentum and leaving with less momentum because some of the momentum was transferred to the electrons that were actually in the graphite. So that, that happening, the transferring of that momentum is a particle-like property. Okay. So this is just a further sort of evidence um, behind the idea that uh, light has a particle in nature. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.